We have quite the show for you today. We are getting into all of your questions, looking at players we're hungry for more and breaking down Thursday night football. You don't want to miss a minute. Make sure you subscribe so that we are with you through the playoffs and get you that championship. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Wednesday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? And I am Andy Holloway. We welcome you in. Busy day. Should be a lot of good conversations. We're talking NFL news today. We're going to preview the Thursday night game, answer some questions. We have Hungry for more on the show. Apologies to everybody out there mm. if this show's getting out a few minutes <laughs> A few oh, minutes yeah. late. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, really, I'm just glancing in Deucer's Alley direction. I don't know who is responsible, but yeah, we, we were ready. We, we do. We, uh, get, we get here on time. Yeah. I, I mean, I think. We're professional. Uh, I've we, been here for two hours. We, uh, we are prepared. We're ready to go. And we can't record because. The, somebody. 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 They, in Deucer's Alley. Broke something. Broke something. I don't yeah, know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I. I've, uh, I, I guess we'll move forward. We'll try. We don't have a choice. Yeah. If you even are hearing this, if they were <laughs> able to record this episode and publish it, we don't even know at this point. No trust. No, we don't know if anybody's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, oh, yeah. Hit that button. That felt good. Um, we love, we, we love, love you guys. guys. Yeah. yeah. I noticed they didn't toss the camera back there at all during that, <laughs> that period of time. You know, now you're making us boom shakalaka ourselves? <laughs> yeah. You yeah, can't even that, find the drop button. yourself? <laughs> hit that boom button. Shakalaka. That's right. You, yeah. just, you just dumped on yourself. <laughs> you're making us boom shakalaka ourselves because we're incapable of finding the button. <laughs> oh, man. Also, don't like wholesale quit, you guys, because we don't yeah. know how to do anything yeah, yeah, yeah. here anymore. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yes, oh. welcome in, one and all. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. A heads up, uh, when you get done with this d delicious episode, we have a new Dynasty podcast yeah. episode. Those come out weekly. Uh, this one was Matthew Betts, Kyle Borgannoni, Jason Moore, and you were talking uh, Dynasty differences? Yeah, we, we brought up a lot of players that uh – have either risen up, you know, what would be the startup rankings or fallen a lot, just different perspectives and um, kind of some, some like, is it prescriptive? Is there a lesson to learn? And it was a lot of really good conversation. Well, I see Austin Eckler's name was, was brought up on the show. Oh. Do you, do you want to tease any of the thoughts on um, awesome? Uh, yeah. Excellent. I, I would say the, the, the main thought that I had was the equivalent of trying to hold your breath forever. Yeah, that's how it, that's how Austin Eckler feels mm. to me is like, <gasps> and then no exhale, just expiration. <laughs> OK, uh, so check that out. He's still trying. He's uh, how how long could he go? Uh, about 15 more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I think your I think his watch, his watch is yelling at him. Yeah, this is like, good. Something podcast. is wrong. Yeah. Are you breathing? Um, Shout out to everybody uh, that is, is throwing – he's still going. We're going to get a really big exhale. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get like 50% of the company soon. Shout out to everybody on Twitter sharing their uh, Spotify wrapped. Yeah. Yeah, That's those, are, cool. always those are always really fun, fun to see. They are. Especially those of you that I see that are in like the – Austin <laughs> Eckler. <laughs> there he is. There he what? is. What are we doing? <laughs> that was uh, the Dynasty show. Yeah. It's just silent? Yeah. It's a real okay. good episode. <laughs> Um, yeah, but no, it's, it's cool to see everybody's, uh, yeah. sharing their, their listenership of the podcast. And, um, we actually, they gave us a, uh, what would that be? A publisher's wrapped. So they gave us some data, including like the most popular episode of the year. Do you guys, well, Jason already knows, Mike, did you see this? I did. Okay. So, it, which well, is so much a, for guessing. It's not a shock. Yeah. That would be the, 
My Guys episode. Yeah, people want to know. That was the top episode of the year. Uh, 205 episodes published. 12,569 minutes. Mm, I think they did the math wrong. Yeah, yeah I think based 12, on- 12,000 hours. <laughs> Mike's math. No, it's 200, 205, 100,000 hours. And we're always curious if people, because most people don't share our show. It's a really good business model we have. We, we create something that feels like secret knowledge for mm-hmm. you to win your league. But there was a most shared episode from mid-August. Did the, uh, Al Borland, did you see any of this information? I did not. Yeah, top 10 tips and tricks to win your league. So some people shared some of our episodes with others. Thank you. That was very nice of them. And we've tried all sorts of angles to get you to share our show. Yeah. And the the one we go with most often is like challenge yourself. Like I dare you to yeah. share this show. The one I'm going to go with now is pretty please. Oh, you're going to go to begging? Yeah. Okay. Well, pretty please is not a beg. Just kindness. Yeah. Pretty please? That's manners. a bet. No, pretty please is not begging. He went right to pretty please. If, if he you had say gone, please, that's asking. If you say pretty please. No, no, no. If you say please, pretty please, begging. Yeah. But he went right to it. So You're saying if that you was start still, with. Okay. That was still the initial ask. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Not begging. Thank you, Mike. So uh, pretty please. <laughs> well, now we're begging. What, is, what, is what are you doing? This episode? It's Wednesday, man. It's, it's hump day. It's Wednesday. Hump day. Mark, 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 mark. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, uh, let's move on. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. All right. Who are you picking for the Hungry for More segment this week? Uh, somebody we've had some nibbles, maybe some flashes in recent weeks, and I'm, you want to see you want to see this solidified, Mike. You are hungry uh, for yeah, more. I will jump in. It is uh, <laughs> the note from Kyle. Michael Keaton Mitchell, mm. starting running back of the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, things have just. They have continued to escalate. Week 12, 9 for 64. We also saw two targets, 46% of the snaps. You know, Since he's really gotten back from his injury, week 9, the snaps have gone up every single week. I'm probably correlated. Gus Edwards' snaps have gone down every single week in that time as well. Gus Edwards will probably still he'll, – he'll get a bunch of touchdowns before the end of the year. But Keaton Mitchell has serious juice – and that is the archetype of running back. Like that's why I was so excited for the potential of J.K. Dobbins, because when J.K. Dobbins is is healthy, I mean that's that's a juicy boy. I mean he he has <laughs> he has real top speed, real shifty, and that's who Keaton Mitchell is. And if he continues to climb in snaps and opportunities for the Ravens, he can do some. He could do some real damage over the fantasy playoffs. I feel like we're in a Jaleel McLaughlin situation with Keaton Mitchell, except there's no Javante Williams to return. Do you right. know what I mean? Like, I think if McLaughlin had just been given that role and yeah. Williams never came back, we would be, you know, he would have been one of those players that was very key to your season, especially with how Denver's playing. So, Keaton Mitchell, you're hungry for more. Jason? Uh, for me, it's a guy who has been heating up, and I want it to be solidified. Breakout sensation week one, Calvin Ridley who then disappeared for months, and now the last two weeks is back. They found him? They found him. They are utilizing him in a much better way. Um, obviously, Zay Jones has been back. There's correlation between uh, you know Zay being on the field and, and Calvin Ridley being better, but that that's not causation. It's just uh, a funny uh, little anecdote that basically I think it's well, really could just – could be. I mean, it, it, the routes he's running are different. They they are different, but ironically, a lot of the touchdowns that Calvin Ridley has had have been while Zay Jones isn't even on the field. Um, oh, just like a sideline, like, yeah. go! I think yeah. it's go, really, Calvin! I think that's what it is. I think it's more about, like, the cheerleader who is with a helmet on in Zay Jones is really helping Calvin Ridley. But uh, he's got a great matchup this week against uh, Cincinnati on Monday Night Football, and they are starting to use him the way that he should be used around the red zone. He's turned his three red zone targets into three touchdowns. He had two total red zone targets over the previous eight weeks before this stretch where he's uh, been really great, and he even dropped a touchdown I was gonna this say, last so was week. So was his drop a uh, 
outside the red zone. Yeah, the, the drop was a bomb. Um, this is courageous of you too to pick Calvin Ridley here because he's he's on the cusp of on fire, and you're squaring off against him this week. <sighs> Did you real? Yeah. You yeah. remember that? No. Yeah. It's uh, look. I uh, I have had to struggle with my own matchup and advice on the show and i have i am just going to say what i believe is good and right for the foot clan and al can play whoever he wants against me yeah he'll be playing calvin ridley i'll tell you that right now <laughs> if that was a way to like imbue that that was a choice for him is that what that was like yeah if he wants to go with him he can no he's got he's got some uh he's got some tight end decisions to make as well okay all right. I don't, What's think, that to do with Calvin I don't think Calvin's one of those decisions. It's his, Are you really on the edge with teammate. Calvin? It's I his... will not be starting Calvin Ridley at tight end. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Good. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with um, you know, one of the more difficult players this season to evaluate. We've had a ton of rookie wide receivers making contributions, and um, and this guy has not had the opportunity that he deserves. But last week we saw maybe the tantalizing potential of. Rashi Rice, wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs, 10 targets last week, you know, led the Kansas City wide receivers in routes run for the first time this year. That was the first double-digit target game. Went 8 for 107 and a touchdown. And, you know, you get the ball in his hands enough and you get a big play. He is, um, you know, he's not, you know, Debo Samuel in every way, but that part of his game is very similar in that you know, you give Debo enough chances, you get a long play. You give Rashi enough chances, you get a long play. The no Kadarius Tony and Hardman situation really consolidated opportunities. You saw Justin Watson with only one catch because, come on, that's enough. Sure. And, um, you know, I, I like what I saw. So I'm, I'm very encouraged just with the, the opportunity he has. The offense has been struggling, so there's some, you know, narrative street reasons why Rashi Rice should be getting more work. Like, hey, it works when you get him the ball. So so hopefully that's what we see. He's my rising or my uh, hungry for more, and um, I'm excited. So, by the way, I mean, the uh, Deucers would like to remind us they did fix the problem that they made. Mm. Oh, that's so true. That's true. They did. They would like credit for that. Like they were the ones that remedied the issue. Uh, there's, I mean. Like that, a firefighter that starts yeah, the fire right. and then comes and rescues the people in the house. Thank you for putting out. Your fire. Yes. Um, that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats uh, in O-Line. No. A carton of OJ. Yes. Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Uh, not, I mean, not to spend our whole show talking about the Deucers, but I, I didn't realize the bald gradient we have in Deucers Alley. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I I'll, I'll take off your hat for a second because I'm sure you want to do that. You've got hair. So that's a yeah. full head. And then, Brooksy, you're you're in your Christmas best, but, yeah, you know, the gradient. <laughs> yeah, he's not taking that off. <laughs> All right. This was, this was the big news yesterday, but let's follow up. Let's talk about it. Jonathan Taylor. Now, is this official? Official? The, it, well, the report was, is that he will undergo thumb surgery and is expected to miss at least two or three weeks. That report was shared, and as the source was documented, that it was Jim Ursay. So, I, should be a reliable source. Well, I mean, I had somebody message me, and this this is I'm sorry to throw this person under the bus a little bit, but it's always interesting when you when someone asks you for your opinion. In fantasy, on on a trade, mm -hmm. you share your opinion, and then they argue with you about your opinion, like maybe because because we all have like a bias with the trade when we're asking for help, mm -hmm. and they were like somebody offered me Jonathan Taylor right now for uh, Devon Achan, and you know he's talking about the fact Jonathan Taylor could be back in time to be helpful, and I'm like could be, and I'm like there's no way in the world I would be doing that, like. I'm not trading H Chan away for Jonathan Taylor. Is, is that the same view you would have in that yeah. situation? Because yeah, I it's... I just don't know if Taylor hits IR. I don't know if, if the recovery takes longer. Like we're in the nitty gritty of the season. Yeah. So it's a thumb injury. The report that we got is he's expected to miss two to three weeks, but they're also not ruling out 
IR at this point. But I mean, what are we in week thirteen? Right. So let's right? just say that they so play that out the- he puts he gets on IR. So he misses thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That means the first game you could have him back would be championship weekend. If he comes directly back, and then uh, yeah, I I would be willing to start him th- that week right off of IR. But to to illustrate you got to get there. Point if he ends up on IR, which today we do not know, uh, and honestly they probably won't announce that until close to Sunday, uh, where they'll have to make that decision so that that first game can go towards his uh, IR stint, or whether you know if if they don't put him on IR by Sunday then that's a good indication that they don't believe he'll miss four games. And they're because I mean, they're, they're in the playoff hunt right now. Like the, the Colts are 6 and 5. Right. And so they are in the thick of it. But let's I mean let's play it out. Yeah. Here we go. Here's the, yeah, schedule. Give, give Ten, the schedule. Tennessee this week. They should win that game. Oh man, they, they should. They should win that game. I they mean, should. it's on the road. It's, it's, it'll be close. In Cincinnati the week after. They win could, a bowl, but I would yeah. I, I think we'd give them one and one on those. Yeah, two let's games. go one and one. So that puts them at seven and six. Pittsburgh at home. They're home. They're, it's they're at Andy. home. Yeah. Okay. I'm All gonna right. tell. I'm gonna say uh, they win that game. I'll take the Steelers. Okay. So seven and seven ish. Uh, I'm I'm on Mike's side, so we'll go seven okay. and seven. At Atlanta. Winnable. Uh huh. Las Vegas winnable. Houston winnable. Well, that's probably, All of these games. That's are. why they haven't IR'd him just yet. Yeah. They're not a. They're like, well, we could maybe. get We don't through. know what we are. But the point being, you're he's gone for at least two weeks. Let's and I'm going. I'll guess three, and then at that point, it's if if the Colts lose some games here, do they bring Jonathan Taylor back for a week? Like it, it wouldn't make sense. And I mean, it's his contract's locked up, so it's it's not that they couldn't do that. It's about well, when you're out, let, let's see if anyone else on this roster needs to be around next year. So there are just so many variables with. Taylor actually coming back. Let's try something on for size. Jason, how does this sound? Okay. Zach Moss, fantasy MVP. That sounds <laughs> likely. <laughs> it, that- it's it's uh it's not my favorite phrase to utter, but I will say that um, P E D M B P. <laughs> I will say that the funny Devon A Chan versus Zach Moss debate we've had this year. It's really gone. It's been swinging back and forth. That's true. In unexpected fashions. That's that's funny. Zach Moss, in the three games he played without Jonathan Taylor this year, 90% of the running back carries, 90% of the touches, had an 8% target share, forced a bunch of missed tackles. He was dominating for fantasy teams. Um, the schedule we just read is not a, a scary one. And the fact he's involved in the passing game so often also helps mitigate the bad run defense matchups. Hopefully you spent whatever fab you have on Zach Moss. I mean, I think it was worth it. Uh, we got that news yesterday on the waiver show. Vikings have officially activated Justin Jefferson from IR. He will play in week 14 after the team's by. Okay. Right back into your lineup. Yep. Could have a new quarterback, though. Uh, Kevin O'Connell mentioned that. And... Um, who will it be? I don't know, but the, the the quick point I wanted to make for the for everyone with Justin Jefferson, be happy that your elite wide receiver is, is coming back. He probably will not be the savior for your team. Yeah, I mean, if uh, if Jamar Chase had been out a few weeks and was coming back to Jake Browning, yeah, it's, it's the same situation. Exactly. The Giants have uh, mentioned, Brian Dable said, we'll see if whether Darren Waller will which, return. Which is exactly what I tell my kids who ask for something, and I know the answer is no. Right. <laughs> we'll see. I just don't I just don't want you to grumble. Yeah, I'm not dealing with I don't this. have time to argue now. Right. Let's argue later yeah. when you figure it out. Yeah, we'll see is just a credit card swipe of we'll, <laughs> we'll deal with this later. It really is. It really is. I don't have time to explain all the reasons why the answer yeah. is no. So we will see. Uh, we will see a big no coming in the future. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so hard to have any confidence in the Waller yeah. universe. Um, but uh, pay attention, I guess. Kenny Pickett dealing with ankle soreness. Could have limited practice. He's had a few injuries where he always ends up playing. So I'm not too worried about that. Has Arizona. He's actually a 
Streaming yeah. quarterback candidate this week. Yep. Hasn't thrown an interception in like 220 passes or something, which is a new record for the Steelers. Well, so his, got, his accuracy problems also translate to the defenders. <laughs> uh, the Buccaneers are optimistic that Baker Mayfield will be able to suit up against the Panthers. He played through the ankle injury during uh, the previous game. Obviously, it could swell up. He's so tough. He, he really I, is a tough guy. He is a very, very tough guy. The, both, both Pickett and Mayfield will just be playing on slightly hurt ankles. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. And we'll take a quick break, come back with the TNF preview and some mailbag. All right, let's um, let's get ready for another island game in the world of the NFL. And all signs point to this one being interesting. Thursday Night Breakdown. The Seattle Seahawks at 6-5 and five take on the 8-3 and three Dallas Cowboys. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Dallas minus 9. They're at home. The over-under is 47. Uh, I've reached the point in my fantasy season, personally, as the Dak and CeeDee Lamb manager, where I weekly approach the team and ask those guys to come close, and then I hop on their backs. And I say, carry me to victory, especially during this bipocalypse of sorts. Um, you expecting more of the same from this Dallas offense against the Seattle Seahawks in this one? Yep. <laughs> I think they're going to wipe the floor with Seattle, to be honest. Geno is still hurting. We just saw the offense completely inept at home against a great San Francisco 49ers defense. Now they're traveling on the road and playing a great Dallas Cowboys defense. And, you know, when the Cowboys have faced teams that are reeling, aren't great, they have smooshed them. So um, there's a nine-point line in this game, and I feel like I'm on the – You're going to take it. I think I'm going to take the line. Since week eight, Dallas has scored 43, 23, 49, 33, and 45 points. Seattle – McCarthy's got to be so pissed. <laughs> All the oh, it's just you know too much to handle. You know, you you just what did you say um, when we found out you were a little bit of an Arthur Smith sympathizer earlier this week? Uh huh. Uh huh. I I said I think he's more uh, Loki than yeah, just super villain. <laughs> not pure evil. Yeah, not pure evil. He's like got maybe some a little redeeming yeah. qualities. Are you that way with McCarthy? I oh, am. I am. No. That, I, look, Mike McCarthy. You're, you're you're getting fooled with Dak on your team. Maybe, but uh, you got those I mean, blue colored glasses. What, what's on to right be now? fooled about? They're eight and three, scoring a billion points a game. I mean, he's you. You have to. I mean, you don't have to, because we get to say whatever we want into the microphone. But when a when a coach has the kind of um, shade that Mike McCarthy has had thrown upon him, the departure of Kellen Moore. How's that working, Los Angeles? Um, and then Mike McCarthy takes over, and then you see him open the offense up. You see him getting the ball into the hands of his, his best player frequently. I mean, C.D. Lamb is pure alpha right now. Other than Tyreek Hill, he's he's like, uh, from a metric standpoint, the best receiver in football. Uh, he's do what what is he not doing that we would want him to do? Like at this point, yeah, buy me a T-shirt. I want Mike McCarthy uh, fan club started. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, don't go don't go that far. But right, yes. I went a little crazy. But yes, give him the credit that he wasn't. Just stingy, grumpy man of a completely broken offense that was. It doesn't feel not old. Doing, it, it wasn't doing anything, and then he said, "Or it, I, I don't know who made the you know all of these decisions, but Mike McCarthy is the head coach, so we will credit him with them changing it, saying, okay, let's go, let's air it out like we've been doing in the past years, and it's been very fun. Like they are a, they are a fun team to watch. Uh, he, like it's a Dallas, because of the the whole the America's team, I think you you get a lot of pushback of like, well they're not they're not my team, and then people hate on the Dallas Cowboys. But dude, I love the Cowboys right now, so I guess I I guess I am with you that I will See, I will give Joyce. McCarthy some credit for being willing to change halfway through the year. You want some equity in the in the fan club? No, no. <laughs> Dak Prescott over eight weeks, number one quarterback over the last eight weeks. Josh Allen, number two. Dak Prescott. 
But in points per game, he's number one. I mean, he's number one over Jalen Hurts, then Allen, then Stroud, then Murray. Like, I believe he is PFF's highest graded passer at the moment. At, I mean, that eight week span, he has completed seventy percent of his passes. He's thrown two interceptions and eighteen touchdowns. And again, I will give him credit because we were quick to jump on Dak and the interception problems from last year. People questioning whether he had, you know, long term uh, viability as the quarterback, and that's an insane run. And I know the matchups have been good. Everybody's going to quickly have. say like they don't play a lot of winning teams. They lost to Philly, but that's a great run. Yeah, I mean, they uh, you can't criticize them for beating bad teams. They didn't make the schedule. Uh, it is fair to point out that they have played almost exclusively bad teams. But they are uh, they're not just winning, they're crushing them. Right, right. They've looked good and and their loss to Philly was close. Yeah, 23-28. Uh, they, they will have a stretch coming up here uh where we'll we'll find out what they're really made of when they play after this week. They've got Philly, Buffalo, Dolphins and the Lions. So they got a month of like real juggernaut matchups. It still will be fine for fantasy, but I think we'll find out the the true Mike McCarthy Dallas Cowboys uh, barometer. How are they? So start sit decisions in this game. Let's stick with the Cowboys side. Jake Ferguson, uh, wh whatever the opposite of a heater is, that's where he is yeah. right now. Um, two bad performances outside the top twenty at tight end. Brandon Cooks is another start sit decision for people. He's been a top twenty four receiver in four of six weeks. I don't think that's a tough decision. I, that's a start. Yeah, Brandon Cooks has been putting up big enough performances with Dak being on fire that uh, Cooks should be in your lineup. the The real question for Ferguson is: Are you looking to who's your other options? And right, I mean, I've got Ferguson in two different leagues, and there's basically no one on waivers. You're 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 chasing Higby's touchdowns or something like that. Now, if if David Njoku that was, would be the one was out there. Um, even with even if it's not uh, Dorian, yeah I, yeah, I still think he is the short yardage. His targets were valve super high for, before for whoever's quarterback. He was he was sitting seven, eight, nine targets already for for a long stretch. He's for, actually been David Njoku is on a twelve or I'm sorry a six week stretch of top twelve performances at tight end nine, eight, yeah. six, nine, fifteen, nine, and yeah, Amari it, Cooper's banged up. It's yeah, that that's a fair point. I'm I'm still good with Ferguson. Uh, I I get his production has not been there, but has his snap counts been the same? Uh, that's something uh, to double. I'm only check I'm only quick. asking that because of the Shoon Man's touchdown, which happens here and there. It's been I, a little lower. So Jake Ferguson, but oh, they've been blowing people out. So seventy two percent the last two weeks. I'd see. I'm still good with it because you have a, a quarterback who's putting up just Madden level levels of numbers right now. They just haven't gone to Ferguson recently. But if your quarterback's going to put all that up and you've shown you have a connection, I'm going to go. I still have Ferguson in. Yeah, he's not been the kind of – he's not the kind of tight end that gives you big yardage numbers. If he doesn't – like if he doesn't have a touchdown, you're probably bummed out. But he's one of the higher probability yes. to score a touchdown. Yeah, he's, he's still running the routes, so. Okay. So you're staying with him, Jake, Jason? Yeah, yeah, I am. I don't. But have you're not a... like super confident. Uh, Based no. on that tone of voice, correct. I, I'm I'm begrudgingly putting him the out there and hoping. yeah, that there you I, go I would definitely play the Muth over Ferguson right now and Taysom Hill with their limitations right now on offense. Yeah, I mean, I honestly I think I would play Juwan uh, Johnson over Ferguson right now. I would roster both if, if that player was available. I'd I'd pick him up and play him. Fourth straight game, the Dallas has been favored by nine plus. Uh, on the other side. You know, Metcalf had a good game two weeks ago and then a disappointment last week. Like, you know, same amount of targets, but the week before scored 94 yards last year, last week, only 32 yards. The Geno Smith problem is real. It actually makes it really hard for me. Like I have Tyler Lockett in a league, right? Some people have JSN. Some people have Metcalf. Like, I, I feel like you're, you're, you don't really have good odds that two thirds of these guys have a good game. I feel like it's like one third of them. I, I think you have good odds that zero thirds of them have a good for this game. week for, for this, this week. week yeah so are you you'd play brandon cooks over any of them yeah i, I would rather have brandon cooks than dk metcalf which feels Whoa, let's get dirtier man. curtis samuel after last week or these three guys um i i would not go that far down okay. i i think that the targets can go anywhere for for the manders so I, i'll stick with the the seahawks there 
Mike, how do you feel about those guys right now? Sad. Sad. Very, very sad. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at I'll tell you my decision is a flex with Tyler Lockett. If A Chan's not back out there, I'm playing Jeff Wilson over Tyler Lockett. Yeah. Like that's that's gonna be the decision I make because I don't like the matchup. I mean, Dallas gives up twenty three total points to the fantasy wide receivers. Uh that's total. Um, that's ninth in the league. They've been even better over the last seven or six weeks. It is risky business, as it is with Zach Charbonnet. I mean, I think you put him out there, but like if you had to guess his fantasy point total for the end of the day, it is what? I think he'll end up with 11 and a half, it, half PPR points. I think he can break 10. Okay. I, I had him around nine or 10. So hopefully he gets some targets, right? The pass rush may. Is, is Michael Parsons going to be healthy? That is a question I think matters in this game. Because I know he was out with an illness, I believe. Let's let's look it up. Because um, that, that will affect things a little bit. But, Gino, it's, out it's of not practice, good. Out of practice as of 18 hours ago from Sports Illustrated. Last year, Gino Smith led the NFL. He had 15 touchdowns of 20-plus 80 Dude, yards. What happened? This year he has three. You added JSN and you subtracted all of his talent. <laughs> well, how's that? I, it makes, I mean, I, it makes some sense from the, the standpoint of Geno Smith has been in the NFL a very long time, and we've never seen him play like that. It just, I was, I was giving the benefit of the doubt of we've never seen him in a real position to succeed, and he was given that chance with the Seahawks, and and he had to earn the starting role. Like, Back when the trade happened of Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. the assumption was Drew Locke is going to be the quarterback and the and Gino will be a backup. But he outplayed Drew Locke, so they gave him the starting job, and then he was the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. So maybe he just had that one magical season, or maybe the just the, the injuries that we aren't hearing about have just stacked up and he can't get through them. Locke at thirty two, Metcalf thirty four. Is that where they are in the JSN year? JSN 52. Those are your three Seattle wide receivers in total fantasy rank. Really? 32? I did not, I did not realize. 34, 52. That DK and Lockett were that low. It's It's been brutal. It's almost like if this was exactly what happened last year, everyone would have been like, that's what we expected. Yes. With Geno Smith. Yes. They, yes, this is exactly what we expected last year. Do you want to hear the schedule for these these gentlemen as you head into your playoffs? I, I know the next two weeks are not nice. You want to play? You're, you're in Dallas this okay. week. Then you uh, you travel to this uh, kind of a, a fun place, San Francisco. Mm. And then, uh, don't worry, you get to stay home the next week, but you play Philly. At least you could pass uh, on yeah, Philly. Yeah, you should. It should work. Should. Yeah, I mean, there's, I, a, there's you been know, a lot of shoulds. To me, it's like Geno, if he's going to be facing a pass rush that forces him to be ex- exceptionally good this year, that, that could be a problem. So, um, did get a little update for you as we move on from the Thursday night game, which, I look, I am excited to watch that game. Yes. Yeah, mostly because it's not – it doesn't include the Jets. No, it's mostly because you've got the CD Dak stack. <laughs> <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Anyone with CD Dak stack oh. in your league right now is crushing. They're just they're winning every week. I literally, when the game starts, I start dancing. I believe, and it. I don't stop till the end. Um, little update on Jonathan Taylor, head coach Shane Steichen uh, indicates that the Colts will not make a move at running back in the wake of the Jonathan Taylor injury. Strongly suggesting that Zach Moss will get the overwhelming majority of all carries, just like he did early in the season. Well, yeah, so. I thought that was honestly when I started that update because I hadn't read it. I thought we were. I thought that was like an indication that he wouldn't go on well, IR. I thought that's where they were going. But with if that. they're saying they won't make a move, that's that has some value. Like they're if they're not going to actually bring anybody in. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, anything else from that Thursday night game you guys want to discuss? Or are we ready to move on? Let's move. Let's do it. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right, um, we've. <laughs> that's all I have for you. Uh, if you have a question, <laughs> Mike, Mike, that's the most disappointing. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, part that's of me, enough out of you. Part of me was just rooting for a real traditional one. Mm. And you gave, you know, you gave without a, little, a flourish. No flourish. I was uh, looking for no flourish this week. I'm I sorry. Think that's no longer traditional. 
There's always a flourish. Always? Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's what I'm disappointed about. Okay. I, I, I got something real bland coming up next no, time. No, just here and there. I mean, just to make the flourishes stand out. You know, there's always a flourish. I can't wait to hear how bad yours is going to be on purpose <laughs> next time. No, it won't oh, be bad. Yeah. It will be excellent, but it will be what just it is. Cut off. Yeah. What it is. All right. If you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. Or you can dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Brooksy, do we have some voicemails today? Yes, sir. All right. Let's hit one. Hey, ballers. Love the show. Quick question for you. In a full PPR league, how much do you trust Joshua Palmer coming back from his injury? He's supposedly going to be healthy, but would you play him over someone like a Deontay Johnson? Thanks, guys. Look, I, right. I'm, I'm willing to be wrong here. So it's, I, the question was a Joshua Palmer health, basically. Yeah, and, and look, I, I'm on the side of, like, I had Joshua Palmer on my league of record team. He was great. I, I thought I had the number two guy in Los Angeles, which was very valuable. Got hurt. Had to make the decision, do I keep him on my roster in the IR spot or do I let him go? At least weeks ago when I was reading, there was not a lot of optimism he was going to be back immediately upon his eligibility. Now, I, I could be wrong. He could have made a great recovery. I don't hang out with Joshua Palmer. I, I definitely think Joshua Palmer will be valuable uh, as soon as he is back. But when he's back, I'm not going to put him in my lineup week one. I want to see the uh, successful game without reaggravation of the injury Deontay is playing Arizona. He isn't the type of player where, you know, this isn't Justin Jefferson coming back where it's like week one, you put him in your lineup uh, because the ceiling isn't really the same. Uh, so when Josh Palmer comes back, I, I would pick him up if he's on your waivers right now because he's eligible to return, might not be back this week. Um, but I'm not starting him week one. He's got to prove the health. Okay. Do you agree with that, Mike? Yes. And Deontay has a good matchup. Like the specific question of Palmer at New England this week, if he was back in Deontay versus Arizona, you got to go with the player that's guaranteed to be back. Mm -hmm. Jake Goodnight says, how do I go on now that I'm out of the playoffs? What is my purpose in life? Your purpose is to watch the world burn. Mm. You are playing against teams who are trying to make it into the playoffs. And while it hurts to not make it into the playoffs, it feels a it feels a little bit good when you remove someone else from playoff contention. So I that would be making the world burn, really, mm. not just watching. Arse, you, you, oh, you're you're the one sure. setting some fires. Yes, with it, your efforts. Yeah, that, and so that's what I recommend. Make like look at that because you have you have people in the league that are your friends that you respect, but you want to see them fail. Right in the game of fantasy football, so you keep playing, keep like. Fill your, fill your bench with all the insurance running backs. Now if, there are people with very strong opinions opposite of that, saying once well, you're eliminated, you're not you're, allowed to pick up free agents. That's that's the, the the argument of of in the playoffs. We are not there yet. We're still a few weeks out. Fair. So if people are are riding dirty right now, like the person who has Tony Pollard is, you know, just yucking it up without Rico Dowdle on the bench. Go get Rico Dowdle, like. In the event that that they need them, they'll go to the waiver wire, and you will laugh in their face. Mm -hmm. If you say trade deadlines closed, also Mike is Mike is certainly like if you want to be trained, he has a master class on vindictive yes. management. Yeah, um, grudge holding one hundred and one. We we actually talked about this. I think you had, you had already <laughs> left, or you were doing. I think you were doing the dynasty show yesterday. But but if if there was like a special power that each manager in our league has, like we've got one manager whose special power is. They will not accept the offer without giving you a counter with a slight tweak because they right. want the last word. Yeah, Daniel. And then, <laughs> then there's a a manager like Mike, and Mike's secret power is that he will, to the detriment of his own team, yes, not yes. accept the trade he determines to be unfair, um, just so that you you burn. And and like at the trade deadline, like Mike was talking about this, he was trying to unload Tua for whatever. Mm -hmm. Not whatever, but like for a, a decent trade, was, he he was not going to be kept for for my team. Yeah, I, I mean, had I had other quarterbacks. I'm out of playoff contention for the league, and John, some might say just get whatever you can. Yes, it, which which it, it it's a fair strategy. I'm fine with if that's how people want to do it. Of like just anything because this player has no value. But I look at it as if this player is going to help you win a championship, you're going to compensate me for it, and so. 
I was negotiating with Josh. Josh was trying real, real hard to pay nothing mm -hmm. in the trade. And then he he's like, yeah, this is not this is not going to work. So I will actually negotiate, and which we did. I I had my starting, but you were willing to go. Oh yeah, to I, the grave with yes, Tua. Absolutely, and I, there was a zero percent. If if the trade didn't happen, that guy would be on my bench. He would not be dropped. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. I you gotta you gotta be oh, vindictive I was, with. I mean, your last holes. week Mike paid attention to every team that turned down Michael Pittman in trades. Mm -hmm. Did the math on their teams and whether. They had accepted his offer if they would have won yep. and then reminded them of what their circumstances were. <laughs> but anyway, so another thing you can do is make sure you're still paying attention because a lot of stuff happens right now through the end of the year. Players rise from out of nowhere and you have to, to be more prepared for 2024. Mm -hmm. Know what's going on right now. Don't miss out on these late breakouts or whether they – like you can have an early jump of is this a real thing or is this just a flash where this player just had happened to have a couple of weeks because of circumstances. And I will also say this for I think it is you know some people are built that way, but it's also very human nature if your team is eliminated to lose interest. Cuz that happens. And if you're in sure. a league where the other managers are not you know they kind of fade away. This is there are things to be done. I mean, you you can convert your league to a basic keeper league of any shape and size that keeps people involved because they're interested. Then you're picking people up. You don't know. I mean, two two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I don't know if Tank Dell looked like a keeper. Now he looks like a keeper. Mm -hmm. uh, Jaden Jaden Reed, maybe. Yeah. But so you're more incentivized in a keeper league to just toss those guys in your bench. And then the other thing that Mike has brought up before, like if you are in a paid league, a money league, you can have weekly prizes. If you have a weekly cash prize for the high scorer of the week, then players are incentivized to keep competing as mm -hmm. well. So there are some peripheral ways to make that happen. Uh, let's grab another voicemail. Hey, I'm just wondering if you guys would trade Zach Moss for Zay Flowers. Um, I'm looking for a wide receiver, too, and I think the rest of his season schedule is pretty good. Thanks. Love the show. Let me know. Oh, man. So trade Zach Moss right now for Zay Flowers. I, I Which, a reminder, Zay is on a bye week right now. Yeah, personally, I would not do this. Um, Zach Moss, in his starts without Jonathan Taylor, has been like a league-winning type of player. His production, his performances are consistent and impactful in a way that few, you know, like like Kyron, um, you know, where, where he's putting up massive amounts of fantasy points in one spot. Zay Flowers... I know that he's got two games without Mark Andrews, both great games. But he's also got, you know, we're 12 games into the season, and he's got two great games. Right. So what uh, if you don't have an act like, your optimal starting roster doesn't have a spot for Zach Moss? I know that's it could seems unlikely, but what if that's the case? I mean, if you're not going to put Zach Moss into your lineup, then I'm, I'm fine shopping him around and, and seeing what you can get. I, I wonder if you can't do better than Zay Flowers, though. I don't think Zay Flowers – he doesn't strike me as someone that's going to help you win a championship. And maybe the upcoming schedule mixed with Mark Andrews being gone will prove that to be a an incorrect thought. And, and you know, this is the voicemail from – like, you have your beliefs in Flowers. Like, if you want to call your shot and say, hey, I – I'm looking at this schedule. I believe in the talent. Without Mark Andrews, I think he's going to be a league winner. Then, yeah, then go ahead and call your shot. Make that move. You know, I, I uh, thought Tank Dell was going to be a league winner, and I went to try to trade for him. Stupid Andy <laughs> beat me. But, like, there is something nice about if you see something, if you believe something, calling your shot and doing it. So I, I don't have, like, this isn't an absolutely not. But for me, I don't think Zay Flowers is going to be a league winner. And I think Zach well, Moss I think, could be. I think one key component here is like Zach Moss is guaranteed to be something for your team, could have an expiration date with the return of Jonathan Taylor. Mm -hmm. So if you're not fighting for the playoffs now and you view like the later weeks as more valuable, that might be a reason to take the Zay Flower side of that transaction. Um, but right now we just don't have a lot of clarity on how long Jonathan Taylor is going to miss. Like, if you told me he was going to be out the rest of the year, there's no chance I would do that that move. Uh, this question comes in. I mean, we've got Puka questions coming in everywhere. Uh, this comes in off of Twitter. K Swee says, do I sit Puka? Tank Dell? 
or Brian Robinson in a half point PPR league. Brian Robinson this week has the Miami matchup. And then uh, Tank is in, right? Tank is, you're not possibly benching Tank Dell right now. Would we agree with that? I is think that, that's I will, the consensus opinion. I would agree. Cleveland is the matchup for Puka this week, uh, which is a tough one. So I think Tank is a lock because of that. I mean, the Denver matchup is tough, too, actually, versus wide receivers. Oh, man. I mean, I. So to me, this is between Puka and Brian Robinson. That's that's how I view the sit the sit decision. Okay. I yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the status of Denzel Ward? Is he going to be back in business? That's a good question. Um, I don't know that we know right now. So Denzel Ward was out against the Broncos. Um, Shoulder injury. Who is Cleveland giving up those points to to start the game last week? Two two scores right away. What was that matchup? Why am I blanking? Are you talking on? about the against Denver? Yeah, it was Denver. It was Denver. So like like they did give up some production in the passing game without Denzel Ward. Was my point. I think I'd play Puka. Eileen Puka and as, Sid Robinson as well. Yeah, I mean uh, Robinson's got a higher floor. Puka's got a higher ceiling to me. In yes, this, in this week. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Robinson has to catch passes, yeah. which he has been. But we uh, do have Gibson back. Yeah. With uh, Gibson back, Curtis Samuel back and healthy and obviously very involved last week, we saw, you know, the the previous weeks, Brian Robinson was six receptions, seven receptions. With those guys back and healthy, he only had two receptions last week. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to sit Brian Robinson. Smithy FGC on YouTube writes in. He says, should I trust... Najee Harris going forward after a strong performance in the new system, 15 for 99 and a touchdown, but zero targets last week. You should definitely trust him this, this week. week. Trust yeah. the heck out of him this week. Yeah, <laughs> trust trust him this week, but this is this is a still week to week. He'll be mentioned on tomorrow's episode. Yes, he will. As will his running mate. <laughs> Man, looking at his upcoming schedule. These are some pretty soft defenses. So you got Arizona this week, mm -hmm. New England the next week, which that that could that could be more bottled up. But then the Colts, that's one of the best teams to run on. The Bengals have not been able to stop the run recently. Seattle, despite getting Leonard Williams, is one of the worst run last, defense. Last six weeks for Seattle, they are uh, yeah they're terrible, the, the worst. Um, and then that I mean that's championship week. So Najee, yeah, with the new corner, yeah, maybe you do. Ethics question, and maybe maybe our final question. We'll see. Bryce in Wisconsin. Earmuffs, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> ethics question, Bryce in Wisconsin. You have the number one seed. First round by locked up. You play the number six seed this week. And you oh, sit your best yeah, yeah, yeah. you sit your best players because you want to keep that much better number seven seed team out of the playoffs. Is this strategic or is this evil? And um, well, here we are again. Welcome. Welcome one and all this, to the uh, – We get asked, Depending on who you are, ethics question. Right. Because uh, if you're the number – Because it could be both. If you're the number seven seed trying to get into the playoffs and you're playing the six seed and the other team's playing the six seed and they bench their players to keep you out of the playoffs, you're going to lose your mind. Yes, I mean that, that is true. So you slip your You're gonna slip lose a friend. <laughs> slip your shoes onto that person's uh, situation, and that's your perspective, right? Like the seven teams battling to get in, they see that the number six seed has to play the number one seed. They're like, "Yes, I got a shot to get into the playoffs," and yet this whole personal autonomy, do whatever you want, league be darned situation. It is that I, you know, the some people believe that. It is strategically evil. Um, I think I, that is. I am formally opposed. I. I mean, we've been asked questions like this for years, and it's yeah. it's pretty much always been the same answer, right? First of all, you have to start an active lineup. That's that's not. You can't bench your right. players and not have a lineup. That's um, completely against the game that we are playing. Uh, as far as how egregious can you make these decisions i i the way that i have always viewed it the way i've said about it for for years is simply 
if you've got a questionable decision, like we just talked Puka or Brian Robinson, right? And we we lean sitting Brian Robinson, and you're like, yeah, I don't think he's the but right. We play. had to work through we it. We had to work through it. Maybe maybe put him in. Be like, yeah, I think he's maybe the worst matchup, and so put that guy in. Th there's no problem there, but you're not going to take someone like you know Royce Freeman and put yeah, him take in. Take Dal Puka, those guys, and just yank them and throw them on the <laughs> yeah. So on the I, I think there's um I think there's just a reasonable gamesmanship you can play, but you can't you know outright tank. There's no way we're recording right now. <laughs> like there's just there's just no chance this episode's being recorded, edited, none of that. Like you're not hearing this. Why? Well, because uh, look, this ethics debate we had this. We, I, I'm gonna just tease it. I won't bring it up. It gets brought up on the Dynasty Show. If you want to hear some things that took place in the Dynasty League that brought this exact type of ethical debate, um, you can go listen to the Dynasty Show because it got it got brought up in there. So, uh, different opinions. Some right, some wrong, you yeah. know. And <laughs> how opinions go? Just you know, be careful what you wish for, too. Yes, yes, I agree with that. I mean, th this whole idea that we know. Yeah. Look, you, I mean, that don't. team might have Zach might have had Zach Moss on the bench, and you wanted to play him, and then an injury happens, and now you're facing Zach Moss because you thought they were the easier team. Yeah. That is, um, I mean, we were looking at the playoff matchups in our league of record yesterday, Jason. Uh -huh. and you're like, I kind of hope you lose so I can kind of get this matchup in the first round, and it's like. You never know, man. You you look back and things change quickly. So uh, yes. oftentimes I think you just kind of press forward. The truth is, is like if you have a better team and you have the better players and you play them the right way, you're going to win your matchup. And um, there you go. Anybody yeah. can beat anybody in the playoffs for sure because of, you know, one giant, uh, what was it, Mike Evans, three touchdowns with Tom Brady. Yep. Oh, yeah, baby. Yep. That happens. It happens. And then, you know, we just put ourselves through it again next year. Reminder, before we close things out, drop it like it's hot. Uh, waiver wires, they went through this week. Also, reminder on That the, is a reminder to pick up players that others have dropped. Yes, in addition to picking up players other players have dropped, this is the season where you must be looking at your matchup. You must be looking at what your opponent needs. If he's got a quarterback on by next week, if you know, then then you need to block on defenses, on tight ends, on quarterbacks. Like it's not just, well, I, I don't need a quarterback. I've got Jalen Hurts. It's like, well, yeah, but if your opponent needs one and there's one good one out there, you need to start taking that approach as we enter these final playoff weeks. Agreed. Yeah. Um, yeah, block it like it's hot, Brooks. Ooh. Yeah. I like oh, yeah. That. This, is, nice. this is a time of year start thinking defensively, not just offensively. All right, tomorrow starts of the week. The matchup previews Friday. The Wheel of Shame makes its return once again. We'll get into Fantasy Faceoff. More matchups on Friday. Hopefully have some injury updates for you as you get primed and ready for Is this week 13? Week 13? Yes, yep. yes it is. How? Crazy. How? Is oh, that man. how time works? It just goes. Mm -hmm. it, there's no stopping it. We'll be at Christmas. Well, not yet. No. I mean, we don't. we're working on it. Yeah. Looking into it. Uh, the, is that the, uh, the, the Zach Morris uh, pa pause? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the timeout. Yeah, I'll use that, and I'll swap some starters for my opponent. All right, that is going to do it for today's show. Shout out to the Deucer sitting over there on the ones and twos. Judge Giamatti, thank you. Al Borland, I love you. And then Papa Josh is over there as well. All right, take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.